Hi, and welcome to the chapter number 24, which is earnings per share. Earnings per share is come under International Accounting Standard uh, 33. So earnings per share is basically about uh, rotate in two concepts. One is uh, what is the basic earnings per share and what is our diluted earnings per share. So almost 90% uh, of this chapter is about uh, the basic earnings per share and 10% leads to diluted earnings per share. Why earnings per share is so much important to we'll discuss in this chapter. Why it changes if there is a change in the share capital or if you issue a share, if the share are being split, if the share are being given like a bonus shares. So it, the value of uh, EPS earnings per share basically changes from one scenario to another scenario. Um, who needs to report this one? Uh, all the listed company needs to report this EPS. Uh, where they need to report? They need to report this EPS just uh, beneath the statement of uh, uh, comprehensive income, where they talk about the profit after tax or profit before tax, just beneath that in the other comprehensive incomes. So this is where it is uh, used. That this slide shares about where the standard apply. Uh, of course, I already discussed it apply to the listed firm. So uh, international contract number 33, in the Australia, it become uh, 133. So it's the same. Then um, the entity must disclose the APS is a mandatory requirement. Um, it's just a ratio, if you can say, uh, what is the ratio? We'll discuss later how we calculate it, how the calculation changes. We we'll discuss the calculation of this uh, chapter. This chapter is mostly focused on the the empirical part of how we can calculate the basic EPS and how we can calculate the diluted EPS. Now, we need to define what is the EPS. Of course, the definition is mostly like the formula, how the number of shares is determined. Uh, this is the question which we discussed almost throughout the chapter, why the number of shares changes uh, from one company to another company, from one scenario to another scenario. So the basic formula for EPS is um, EPS is equal to earnings for company divided by uh, weighted average uh, outstanding shares or number of shares. We talk about the ordinary shares. Ordinary shares are those shares where the company is bound to pay that dividend off. So that's a part of uh, what is our denominator. Again, there will be several changes throughout the chapter and we'll discuss that one by one. So basically the formula for EPS is, which we discussed just now, is the earning of the share after we make the payment for the preference dividend. So in this slide, they discuss about the preference shares. So preference shares are not ordinary shares. Preference shares are those shares which has two practices. Number one is, uh, they are kind of a, like have a percentage of dividend. We have to pay that certain percentage on them. And they got preference in paying dividend. So before we pay for the ordinary dividend, for the ordinary shares, we pay for the preference shares. So they are the very first, very, very first um, payment with the company needs to do apart from the debentures, so preference shares or preference dividend is the one which needs to come up. So whenever company are declare a profit. So EPS is equal to, which we discussed earlier, is um, you can say earning of the company earnings less a preference share payment divided by, well, we need to take an average average of outstanding shares. What is that average? How are we going to calculate that? What is the different uh, method for calculating the average? Um, average normally, uh, for example, during the year, we have a stock of 100,000 shares. So that 100,000 will be the denominator because we're holding these shares throughout the year. However, if there is some certain change during the year, we have to multiply that until when we hold this 100,000 shares, 
times the time factor, time average factor. Again, we will discuss that using the question how we can how we can calculate this time factor. And uh, so it is important to understand what is the accumulated dividend and uh, what is uh, if the dividend is being accumulated means you haven't paid last year, but you are going to pay this year. So you're going to pay together and it will be deducted from the earnings. So not cumulative dividend means uh, there is no preference dividend uh, paid. It is ignored for the purpose of calculating the EPS. So uh, once there is a question and they talk about the preference share, you have to see whether the dividend on that is cumulative or not cumulative. If it is not cumulative, we do not consider that as a part of our EPS calculation. But if it's cumulative, means not being paid last year, or we're going to pay later on this year, then it will be become a part of EPS calculation, just like we add up here. Now, the comp uh, we continue the computation for the EPS. In this slide, they say, they must exclude the following. For any attribute linking to the non-controlling interest, like if you have a subsidiary uh, or any associate companies who has uh, non-controlling interest in the company, means they do not control a significant amount of uh, percentage of share in the company, like less than 50% for sale. So any proportion to that is considered at, as a part of excluded as a part of calculating the EPS. Then cost of serving equity paid or provided for whatever, and then other than the dividend we pay for the share. Then there is a concept of partly paid shares. Partly paid share, uh, for example, if you have a dividend, uh, if you have a share whose value is uh, one ringgit, and the company has uh, paid 70%, uh, like 0 0.7 a penny from that share, so still uh, that 30% is left. So we will exclude that 30%, but will we include that 70% which the company has paid because the denominator of this EPS calculation is the paid ordinary share. Uh, so these are the few factors which we do not consider while, while calculating the EPS. Um, the definition of ordinary shares, so while we are calculating the EPS, we need to see the denominator. Denominator say, hey, we need an ordinary share which are paid off. How many shares are there? And how we actually do the weighting for them? So for example, we have a shares of 100,000. Again, say the same example, and we have these shares for nine months. So, and then afterwards we issue and furthermore 10,000 shares after nine months. Uh, so first, how are we going to do the weighting? For the nine months, we calculate the number of days. For example, number of days for nine months is XX divided by 365 times number of shares. Then for the next uh, attempt, we edit up, uh, we issue furthermore 10,000, it become 110,000. How many months left? I think uh, after nine months, three more months left. For example, 90 days for those three months, divided by 365 times 110. And this is the formula we will use for waiting. Of course, it will change if the shares are being issued. It will change if the bonus shares are being issued. It will change if there is uh, some certain other shares changes. So this chapter is, actually uh, all about for you to understand what is the different types of shares are there and then the company issue them or buy back some of the shares what actually happened um so how it affects the eps calculation so denominator in this chapter which is uh, on the top we have a uh, earning per share means earning divided by number of shares that share calculation the ordinary share calculation is very much important for you to understand how we're going to do the weighting of those shares and how we consider these different different aspects like a fully share, partly share, fully paid share, partly paid share, bonus share, preference share, uh, and few more things. So let's dig into the questions so it will create more understanding. Um, a little bit definitions are provided. I leave this definition for you to understand what is the under shares. Now we are going for the question. So in the question say that there is a company who has a 100,000 shares issue at the start of the year. 
and it issue another 200,000 fully paid shares on 1st March. So what we do a day before 1st March, for example, is, um, is, a, is a 30, uh, 31st, uh, 30th of uh, February. So we will calculate a 28th of February. So what we do, we calculate how much we are holding this for how many days. So for example, we have 100,000 shares. We are holding from 1st July until the 28th of February, which is one day before the next transaction happened. So we are holding uh, 1 million share. So these in number of days are 243 divided by 365 and the total will be 665753. Then what happened in the very next day on the 1st March? They say, we furthermore issue 200 shares on the 1st March 2019. So what we do, we add up this 200,000 in the calculation of 1 million. So it become 1.2 million outstanding share now. So it will start from 1st March as given in the question and until the next transaction. So the next transaction says that we issue 200,000 shares on the 1st March, as well as buying back 100,000 shares on 1st April. So we have series of event throughout the year when you buy back the share, when you furthermore issue the shares. So when you issue the share, we will add that in total number of outstanding shares. However, when you when the company is buying back the shares from the shareholder, so they have to detect that number of shares from the total number of uh, while doing the weighted average of this uh, total number of outstanding shares. So as you can see, once we issue the share of 100,000, we add up. Next thing, we have buy back 100,000 share. Um, sorry, here we buy 200,000 share. We issue a 200,000 shares. We add up 1.2 million. 100,000 shares are a buyback. So buyback will be have a negative impact on the total number of shares. So it will be reduced by 1.1 million. And again, we will see when the transaction happened. The transaction happened on the 1st April. So one day before 1st April is 31st March. So we have 31 days for this 1.2 million shares divided by total number of days. And the weighted average is 101918. Next is uh, the last one, which is buyback. So buyback is, as I already tell you, will be deducted from total number of uh, shares outstanding. Uh, the number of days we hold for this whole transaction is 91 days, almost three months, starting from 1st April until 30th June, dividing it by total number of days times 1.1 million, it becomes 274247. So total average of this number of here is 1.04 million. So this is how we will calculate the denominator. The denominator is very much important to calculate for the EPS calculation. So if the question arises, how you can do the weighted average for the share. So this is the method to do the weighted average for the, for the share, for the ordinary share. Next, so first issue was, uh, if the company issue the share, what you do, you add up that. Shares in the total outstanding share. Second issue was, uh, when the company buy back the shares, what you do, you reduce those shares from the total outstanding shares. Number three, is uh, partly paid shares. So if the partly paid shares happen, what is the partly paid share again? Uh, if the company has a share of uh, one ringgit and uh, per share value is one ringgit and they partly pay only 0 0.7 out of that uh, one ringgit. So we will take that 0 0.7 into the weighted average calculations uh, rather than uh, rather than taking them all one as per one ringgit, one, one, one share because the company has a right for the participating in the dividend is up to the amount they have paid for. So let's do some of the questions from that. Another concept is a, a convertible, uh, such as convertible securities. So some of the securities, some of the shares are convertible. Like if the company issue um, convertible bonds or debentures, which eventually can convert into a share or ordinary share, what will be the treatment for that? So this is now issue number four. Uh, so what we do, we combine this one, two, three, four issues into one question and see how the mathematics work. 
So this this person basically covered the partly paid shares and a little bit touch on the convertible uh, shares for this uh, for this question. So question is that on 30 June 2018, there is a company who has a profit after tax. Uh, yeah, always remember we are taking the net profit, profit after tax, net profit uh, before tax. So the earnings of the company only become EPF part if the tax has already been paid because that has statutory requirement to pay the tax. So it cannot be a part of EPS. So on 1st July, means the year start, 2017, they have a 200,000 fully paid shares, which is ordinary share, which we have discussed so far. And subsequent event happened. They say 100,000 ordinary share was issued on, on 1st September 2017. Issued means we will add this into the value of 200,000. So 225,000 fully paid ordinary share was purchased back. Uh, so if we are purchasing back 225,000, it will be reduced from the ordinary share calculation. And yeah, just remember you have to calculate, we have to be very precise about when we are buying that, or issuing that, or buying back these shares, the date really matters as, as term for the calculation. Number three, we have 70,000 partly paid ordinary share issue on the 1st April with an issue price of $2. The share was partly paid means how much company has paid is only 1.3. The partly paid shares carry a right to participate in the dividend. So that's very much important. Uh, this share, although they are ordinary share and ordinary share has the right of dividend, but they need to mention that like uh, in the question. So it will be part of our conclusion. For the entire year, uh, the company has 1 million, uh, 1 million preference share at uh, one, which provide dividend at the rate of 10%. So uh, this is not about denominator, about the preference share, it's about the earnings per share. So we have an earning per share of uh, 900,000. Out of that 900,000, we, uh, we will have to reduce what we need to pay for the preference share. So it's on the earning side. So for the downstairs, we have only one adjustment, two adjustment, and third adjustment. Partly pay share, uh, purchase issue shares, and purchase bank shares. Three adjustments for that part. So let's see the question. In the question, they have a profit after tax, 900,000. 10% of the dividend of one, 1 million preference share is paid, that is 100,000. So we have a, on the on the on the top, what what in the formula is the earning? So we already have the earning, which is eight hundred thousand. So earning is normally very easy to calculate. The only one or two adjustments is about the preference or dividend, nothing more. The most important thing is the denominator, because the denominator includes the weighted average of the ordinary shares. So on first uh, July until thirty first. Um, August, we have 62 days. And uh, yeah, in the examination, it can be 60 days uh, up to you. For example, you think, hey, it is two months and two months means 60 is fine with me. So it, it, it no need to be very specific in the calculation. So total number of shares was 200,000. So 200,000 times 62 divided by 365, it become 33,973. Then from 1st September till uh, 31st, uh, January, we have 153 days, almost five months. Uh, we do the calculation because these are the shares which we furthermore issue. How much we furthermore issue is 100,000 shares. So it becomes 300,000. And we calculate the weighted average. So the third one is, um, so we buy back some of the shares. How much shares we buy back is 25,000. So from this 300,000, we will reduce this buyback shares. How many months we buy back this one was for five months, starting for uh, 1st of February until the June, the year end. It is almost 150 days uh, divided by 365 times, multiply times 275 is equal to uh, 113014. So these are the three adjustments which we already almost done in the last question. Um, this is the same adjustment which we have done for this question. However, we do not disturb our ordinary share when they were uh, partly paid shares during the year. So for the partly paid shares during the year, what we do, we, um, we have this uh, um, shares, which is um, 
we we buy the share on the first April and the year end is 30th June, so they are 90 days. So we take the weighted average, 90 days divided by 365. Total amount of shares are 70,000. However, there is a one new adjustment adding up with the part liquid share. That the amount of that two dollar per share, we only pay 1.3. We don't pay the these are not the fully paid the share by two. So two by two is not there. So it's 1.3 only. So what we do, one by three divided by two. So we only take that part which we pay for because all other order shares are paid for. So 1.3 is being paid. So that uh, that will be included in the calculation as a multiplier. So 1.3 divided by two times 91 divided by 365 times 70,000 equal to 11,344. And uh, that will become 284. 0.084. So that is our denominator. Now we calculate the basic EPS. Basic EPS is earning divided by the weighting average uh, number of uh, shares, which is this one with 800,000. So our EPS, basic EPS is 2.816. So that was the answer. So this question uh, contains a uh, forward adjustment when we have the shares, when we issue the share, once we buy back the shares, and when we partly paid for the shares. The shareholder pay, partly paid for the shares. So this is the few adjustments which we need to consider while, uh, while uh, making the partly paid shares adjustment in our EPS calculation. Okay, now next, the fifth issue, it will be adjustment for the discontinue operation. So if you have a subsidiary which will discontinue the operation. So that's more about discussion. It's not been tested in this question. Like if there's a subsidiary which discontinues operation, uh, should we consider that amount? If they say, hey, while a company has been, um, there's a sub subsidiary which has uh, acquired a share, uh, which has been excluded from the group, we should reduce their value in APS calculation. So there is one example, small example in your book, which is given 24.2, have a look on that. Another is uh, about the most important is about the bonus share. So bonus share has uh, two to three slides. So what is the bonus share? Bonus shares are those shares which are issued for existing sh ordinary shares. They are not a new shares being issued. So we already have a capital of 100,000 shares. So without taking any further more money, we issue them as shares. Maybe we split the existing shares. So what bonus share will do, it will increase the denominator of EPS, which is number of shares. So normally this is what bonus shares do. And it will uh, reduce our, I mean, because the denominator get bigger. So the EPS value also gets smaller. So this is a fact of issuing a bonus share for the company. So company, once they issue a bonus share, maybe to their employees or maybe to their workers or maybe to some existing shareholder, they give it for free. Uh, maybe this year the company cannot pay dividends. So what they do, they issue for the bonus share, which is called bonus shares. And they are giving them for free instead of paying them money. So in this case, what we do is we just um, we just uh, we just add more to the ordinary shares. So, but there is a specific formula. There are two three slides on that uh, on the bonus share. I will uh, I will encourage you to read all those slides. But uh, the basic formula is very much important for the adjustment factor in the bonus share. So, I think today class this is the most important part. What we do when the company issue the bonus share? What happened to the denominator? The denominator for the ordinary shares needs to be multiplied by the by the adjustment of the bonus share being issued. So there is a formula which is given, but I think the detail of the formula is in the next question. However, I'll just give you a glance on that. The formula for uh, adjustment factor is uh, P naught times N naught plus PR divided by n naught plus one. Um, P naught means the last price for the shares, for those bonus shares. What was the price? Because actually we are not being paid for issuing that capital for the bonus share. So what we do, we take the selling price or fair market value of those shares. Uh, divided by number of shares that is required for one write. Write means what? 
So for example, if there's a four bonus shares are being issued, maybe you will, in return, you will get one order ratio. So it's not like one bonus share, right? Means one ordinary share. So first the company will issue you the rights, rights to buy the ordinary share. And its worth is normally not the same. Maybe six to one means if you have six bonus shares, you will get one ordinary share in return. So you have to see that number uh, in the question. What is the what is the ratio? Yeah, provide this. How many rights we need to buy an ordinary share? Then uh, we have a PR. PR means a subscription price. Sometime in order to get this bonus share, we have to subscribe for that. In order to get this right, we need to pay some subscription fees. Some of the question has subscription fees. Some of the question don't have subscription fees. So being these three factor we will add up in this formula. It will help us to calculate the PX. Um, then we will need to calculate, because this was a formula for the PX, then we need to calculate the adjustment factor. So PX is equal to PX, uh, adjustment factor is equal to PX divided by P naught. P naught again is the last fair market value of that share or the bid price which, which come with the right. So for example, if the, that shareholder who get this bonus share, since they do not pay for it, what will be the bidding price if they, since they are not paying for it, so what will be the bidding price or the market value of that share or the sale price? So we take like one day before selling price of that share uh, as considered as a P naught in this uh, adjustment factor. Very interesting question, very detailed question. It has a few more adjustments which we have done already, I think, um, and it's well-designed question. So on a year end, we have a company which has a net profit of 700,000, of course, a net profit after tax. At the beginning of the year, the company has 500, 500 shares, which is fully paid. Uh, it also has a 200,000 at the rate of uh, $1 and 10% cumulative preference share outstanding. So I always tell you the preference share will be considered if there are uh, cumulative preference share where the dividend has been cumulated. The preference shares are classified as uh, equity. So we have our 10% of our 200,000, which is 20,000. So 20,000 will be reduced from this uh, value of a debt profit. Uh, so we question started from this end, we have our 500,000 shares. On, on first number, the company issue a share. So we know what we do with the issue. We just top up this amount. We just add this amount into the total valuation of the of the shares. So first number that happened. On the 1st May next year, the company issued another 100,000 fully paid share on the basis of one to six, one to six bonus issue. So they issue a bonus right where if you give them a six bonus share, you will return, in return you will get one uh, ratio. So this is the one which I was discussing earlier in the formula that you have to look for uh, look forward for what will be the ratio to be applied in that uh, in that particular formula. If I go back and if I see here, uh, what will be the where we, where we need to use this? So that will be the uh, n naught. So n naught in this formula is six to one. So six is the is the the n over here. Then they also give you the last selling price. So p naught is also given, which is four. The basic EPS for the year is last year was, which was 2018 was 2.10. Why they give you last year EPS? Because if you apply the adjustment factor, you can find the comparison difference from last year EPS to this year EPS. Calculate the basic EPS amount for 2019. Uh, provide the adjustment for comparative EPS for 2018. So one adjustment factor need to be multiplied with that. So overall question seems very simple, uh, but we just need to dig into the formula. Uh, one thing is to notice for, in this question, they do not provide for any subscription amount. So that's not there. N naught is given, P naught is given. We can calculate PX, and then PX is divided by P naught to calculate the adjustment factor. So that's the adjustment factor we need to discuss in that work example of 24.3. So 24.3, we have um, we have earning per share, 200,000. So we have a profit after tax. We exclude the amount of preference share. So 680 is given. 
I already discussed and calculated in the last uh, question while reading the question, it was easier. Now, the main thing is the adjustment factor and where this adjustment factor needs to be applied. So first of all, we calculate the, uh, the bonus X theoretical X bonus price. Why X theoretical X bonus price? Why it is non-numerical? Uh, because they haven't paid for anything. So if they paid for anything, then we no need to write theoretically. So actually we are taking that price, which was one day before the selling price of the share. Uh, and in this case is $4 is, the, is that price. So that's a P naught times N naught. N naught is the number of share, bonus share we have to give to get N and, um, and uh, ordinary share plus subscription amount, subscription amount over here is zero. So on the top, four is here, six is here, but subscription amount is zero. So nothing to be added on. Uh, divided by N naught plus one. So N naught we already know is six plus one. So that's the PX value. This is the PX in the formula. Now the adjustment factor will be PX divided by P naught. We know the P naught is four. So PX 3.42 divided by four. So we get the adjustment factor of 0 0.8571. This adjustment factor is very much important in solving the weighted average of the outstanding share because it will be one of the multiplier in this, in this uh, one of the denominator in the calculation of outstanding share weighted average. Like on the 1st July until the August 2018, we have 62 days, two months, 60 days, divided by 365, which we are doing the proportionate from the very beginning. We have 500 shares. But after you do that, then in the end, you have to divide it by the, the divided by the adjustment factor. And then you will get the weighted average. Do you, why? Why we need to do that? we need to divide it the adjustment factor because there is an adjustment for our bonus share being issued so we have to take out that impact priorly from the day of uh, this uh, bonus shares are being issued because we have to uh, count for those shares before they are being issued so here the adjustment factor will be multi uh, will be divided Next, we further more issue some of the share 100,000 will be added in this calculation. We count the number of days divided by uh, 0 0.8571 and it becomes 464133. So these are the two simple things. Then we have itself uh, the, the calculation for the bonus share. So we have a bonus share of 100,000, which will again add it up to the total amount of ordinary shares. Uh, Number of days are being calculated just like before, but here we don't need for any uh, any adjustment for the factor because we have we need to do the adjustment for the factor for where before the time of the bonus share are being issued. So here we just do simple multiplication and we get one one six nine eight six. Total weighted average is three eight zero two one one. So we already get the denominator. We get the earnings. So we get the EPS. So this year EPS is, uh, basic EPS is 0 0.9997. So this was the requirement number A. Requirement number B, they say you need to do a comparative figure for 2018 and 19. So for the comparative figure for 2018 would be adjusted with, the, with that adjustment factor. So last year EPS was 2.10. We multiply that 2.10 with the adjustment factor. And this is the, the, the impact which, which is done on the EPS calculation while we issue the bonus uh, bonus shares for this, this year. The impact factor is 1.8 uh, per share. So that is a little bit calculation on the bonus share. Why the bonus share are being issued? Because they are like a gift given uh, maybe in return of dividend, they issue the bonus share what will be the impact on on the basic EPS calculation? On the basic EPS calculation, it uh, actually reduced down the, the basic EPS calculation. So for example, last year, the basic EPS was 2.10. This year, we, we issued a bonus share and it, it, it reduced to 0 0.997. Um, another thing which is uh, 
how we can calculate the adjustment factor for the bonus share that is a p naught times p n naught plus subscription amount divided by n naught plus one and then we use the adjustment factor and we have to multiply we have to divide this adjustment factor for all the weighted every ordinary shares prior to the issue of the bonus shares so some of the students what they do they they multiply the, they divide this 0 0.87 a57 uh, after the uh, the bonus share issue actually this, this is the impact which has to start it from the day first of the annual reports have been issued so we have to divide this with the adjustment factor prior to the issue of the ordinary uh, prior to the issue of the bonus shares so this all example of 24.3 i hope you enjoyed the part one of this lecture now i will see you in the part two stay safe take care bye bye